Right. So we move on to the last paper of this session in medicine. It is the topic of the paper is caregiver burden in relation to child's disability among primary caregivers of children with cerebral palsy attending a Sri Lankan tertiary care facility. The paper is by BDR Heva Vitarana, MHA De Silva, WAPS Vikramarachi, and CJ Vijayasinghe. The paper will be presented by Heva Vitarana BDR. Good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Heva Vitarana is uh, not here due to unknowable, unknowable circumstances, but I am presenting as a co author. Thank you for that. <coughs> the assessment of caregiver burden among primary caregivers of children with cerebral palsy attending a tertiary care facility in relation to a child's disability. Cerebral palsy is the most common and costly form of chronic motor disability that begins in early childhood with 3.6 per thousand incidents. Parents and caregivers <coughs> play a significant role in the caring and rehabilitation of their children with cerebral palsy. This excess burden placed on the caregivers of children with cerebral palsy far exceeds the routine caregiving that is normal for par normal part of being a parent. Hence, raising a child with cerebral palsy profoundly impacts the caregiver's daily life, affecting themselves, their family, and their social network. These were evident in these articles as well. So, the main objective was to assess the caregiver burden and associated factors among principal caregivers of children with cerebral palsy attending the Pediatric Neurological Center, Teaching Hospital, Karapitiya. The study design was a cross-sectional study conducted through the Pediatric Neurological Unit at the Teaching Hospital Karapitya, Sri Lanka, and consecutive sample of 163 patients, uh, parents, caregivers of children with cerebral palsy aged 1 to 14 were selected. Methodology, the study, there were three main study instruments. Number one was the demographic data questionnaire, which was a pre-tested self-administered questionnaire. Uh, interview and the second one was a disability data record sheet with included comorbidities, gross motor function classification system or the GMFCS and the manual ability classification system which is the MACS. The thirdly the caregiver difficulty scale which was validated for Sri Lanka by one of our authors was used to check the caregiver difficulties. Results out of 169 children with cerebral palsy fulfilling the eligible criteria, only 163 of caregivers agreed to participate. And according to the participants' characteristics, most of them were mothers, single is 96.3 and aged between 30 to 39, 47.2. They were educated up to O levels, 71.2, and most of them were unemployed. Distribution of children's characteristics. 55.8 were males and 27.6 had spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy mm -hmm. and 60.7 were on long-term medications and 80% had comorbidities and non-self-ambulatory more than GMCSF3 was 71%. Level of caregiver burden, mean total caregiver burden score was 41.9. The majority had a moderate caregiver burden and 13.5 had experienced a high level of caregiver burden and 55.8 showed a high risk of psychological morbidity. The only socio-demography factor associated with caregiver burden was being an only child, which was very significant statistically. And disease-related variables associated with the level of caregiver burden in the sample, the significantly associated ones were the presence of comorbidities and greater level of disability, obviously. In conclusion, we report the first study of caregiver burden and cerebral palsy in Sri Lanka that incorporates the GMFCS and the MACS. We found that a significant number of caregivers of children with cerebral palsy have a moderate to high degree of caregiver burden. In this study, we found that the caregiver burden was greatest among families caring for children with high GMFCS and MACS levels and among children without siblings. There were no relationship between burden and the type of cerebral palsy, family income, gender, or living in rural setting. Our study adds to the literature regarding cerebral palsy and risk factors of high caregiver burden, providing important information for medical professionals, giving anticipatory guidance to families. 
So we recommend routine assessment of caregiver burden for those caring for children with cerebral palsy, particularly children at GMFCS levels 3 to 5. At least an annual monitoring of caregiver burden using a CDS scale to provide appropriate sorry, psychological, economical and social support for their families. Ultimately, this will improve the quality of life experience by children with cerebral palsy and their families with a downstream positive effect on the health and economy of our communities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you have two minutes for discussion. Paper is now open for discussion. Can you have an idea about what was measured in the caregiver burden? Caregiver burden, there's a, uh, it's a question here and that has different aspects that we have monitored including the parents, uh, the type of hours that they spend and how their work is affected and how the other siblings are affected and uh, those things. So we have a score for everything together and the score ranges from 0 to 100 and a score of more than 42 was taken as uh, significant caregiver burden. And that was a pre-tested questionnaire which was used in other countries but uh, validated for Sri Lanka after uh, an initial research. So what about emotional effects, social effects? It's a, it's a pretty long question I think everything was included in that exactly. Uh, I do not have the exact questionnaire at the moment but everything was included in that. So there were emotional aspects. Emotional well. aspects as well. And yes. social functioning being reduced. Yes, because uh, uh, things like uh, uh, whether they could attend a, a social function like a wedding or things right. like that was also added into that question. Yeah. The psychological means depression. You said psychological problems also encountered. That was there, but they were documented very rarely. That was also there, but uh, the whole the, the other psychological aspects were also taken off like the whether how much of time that they could spend with the other children and other siblings as well i think that's all the time we have thank you very much i thank, thank all you. the presenters i thank the judges and i thank all of us all of you who joined us through this webcast thank you very much for being with us uh, and i hope we'll continue uh, logging into the webcast we have today and tomorrow also so there are a lot of interesting sessions and I also thank the judges also for this. Thank you very much. I formally close this session.